UEP is a ceremony you get invited to by medicine people in uh, it's hard to explain or help people understand. Uh, it was like even Cindy had told her for years about it and until she was actually in it, she doesn't didn't fully understand it. Uh, the spirits come in and we call it doctoring. Mm -hmm. So they hear your prayers and whoever you're praying for and whatever it is you're doing, they want to assist to better your life. So... They work with the universe. They try to see where things are and stuff. So I always try to ask for things to get released. While I was in this ceremony, the medicine man moved his bad energy on my head that I've been trying to get cleared for a long time. So he asked the spirits and they got rid of it. And all the flags we gave, the cloth prints are like uh, one meter square. And we call them prayer flags. So when you pray and that is like you give it to the universe and they look into everything and then they come and help people. So all these flags, me and Cindy and Mercedes and uh, Jackie brought to the, to the ceremony and the tobacco. The spirit said they were very powerful and the medicine man was going to take it back to Manitoba. And while he was there, he's going to pray and then he was going to hang it and give it to the universe. Can you explain what the meaning of the flags is and what colors they are? And there is four colors. There's red, yellow, white and blue. So red, I always say is in the East. People have different thoughts and beliefs. Uh, some people say it's yellow. From what I was taught by the, a lot of the medicine men and that, that Red is in the east because the sun comes up and the sky is red in the, in the morning. Mm -hmm. And then in the afternoon, the sun is in the south and the sun is bright and it's yellow. And then in the west, when the sun goes down, it's dark. So we say it's either blue or black. So okay. it represents the west. And then in the north is white because when the north is frozen, it's covered in snow and ice. Mm -hmm. And... So when, when you look at the red flag, that represents the red people or the natives. The yellow is the oriental people. The blue or the black is like people from Africa and the Middle East. And the white is the white people. So each one of them have a, a direction. So north, south, east, west. And the flags, they represent different things. So... From what I learned from the elders in that, white represents family. So if you want prayers and things for family or friends and other things, or certain prayers because they say also in the north is the ancient beings, the ones that work with creator, very ancient, they're very patient, very loving. So white represents that. Also in the east is when you're born, when you first come into the world, the first maybe 25 years of your life. So it's like a clock, like the astrology chart. So that first part is that from birthing up until maybe you're 25. And then the next one goes down to, to the center. So from 25 to about 45. And then from there you go from 45 up to 65. And so then the center elder, is Africa. The center is Africa. The center on the map is like the African continent. The center of? Uh, when you say it goes to the center, this means uh, the, the central group, the central age, which would be then people with black color, right? So this would be the African continent. Uh, I, 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 I'm going to tell you why I'm thinking in this way, because what you're saying coincides very literally to what Rudolf Steiner says on the, uh, on the age uh, location of people, but it's, it's uh, in terms of um, spiritual growth. This, this is what he means by age. Uh, he means the, what would you call that? Uh, not the wisdom, the, let's say the spiritual age. Uh, and he says that the the people in the East, as you say, they correspond to the youth, to the baby age. And yep. then you have people that are 
uh, from India onwards towards Europe, let's say the mid of Europe, they represent uh, 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 teenagehood. Then yeah. uh, the, the Western part of Europe would be then um, already adulthood and whatever is in uh, America, so including the natives, it would be old age. So this, I don't, I'm not quite sure if he relates it to growth of spirituality, but he said that this is how the age of energy moves. And, and it somehow reminded me to what you were saying. But then Africa, you said, because then you said the middle point, which would be mid age, and you said it goes to the center. And this is why I related it to Africa, because we were somehow missing this continent. Yeah, because I'm, I'm looking at the pie and I'm trying to, in my mind, like I'm going like trying mm -hmm. to make like that V shape. Like yeah. this is the child and then down uh -huh. this way is the, so down here going back this way is like what you said, right? Is that where you start going to that certain age and that growth. And then from the, from the West to the North is going into that elderly. So you go full circle in the natives. We always say full circle mm -hmm. and we assign the different races by the colors to the direction. And like I say, everybody has a different way of saying, like I say, some people will say the yellow in the east. But if I was from here to go east on the map in the earth, I would uh, hit England in, in that area. So it's not yellow. It's not the, and the orient and that is more in my west. Because mm -hmm. if I go from Vancouver that way on the map, it goes more into that Asian. So all I know is the the two and some tribes will put the yellow in the first one and red in the second. But what I was taught is red, then yellow. So when we go to the ceremony, even the sun dance and everything, we always bring these four flags because really they represent all the races of man. Do you and make them yourself? Them. What, what is the tradition behind? Do you make them yourself? Long, long time ago, they made different kinds of things. They used different things, uh, but colors always represented the same thing. They would use the colors. So however, if you use pieces of wood that you dyed red or yellow or white or anything and you would hang it so you would have the four different colors and they basically like i say represent all the people on the planet and when we give them we're giving them to the four directions because our prayers like in the sun dance, you take the, the thing and you wrap the tobacco in each one with all your prayers and thoughts and you're releasing it into these directions and asking the universe somewhere to bring in whatever it is you're asking for to help people. Um, like I say, there's really a lot. It takes really lots. I spent lots and lots of years studying with elders in, in, in the teachings, even with the Cree, it's they say you have to be Moscapios for 15 years with a medicine man before you start getting your rights, before you have your pipe, before you can teach or do ceremonies and that. You got to spend time. Same with Sundance. They say if you're going to do Sundance, you have to do 17 years. Then you can start holding your own Sundance and teach because you've done all of the ceremonies. You've practiced and learned all these things. So now you can hold and teach it for other people. So there's long, long periods of time in, in, the, in the teaching. In the UEP, the, the medicine man is trained and taught how to do his ceremony. So when you go to the, to the ceremony, he'll put up, a, he puts some blankets down and he puts some stumps on each corner and then he hangs or puts uh, sticks and then he hangs the colors in each direction. And then he sets up his altar with all his different spiritual objects that spirit gave to him or blessed for him to use. And then he hears all the prayers. We give him the offerings. And then UEP in Sioux means tied up. 
So a long, long time ago when a person passed away, they used to put them on uh, big poles with a, a thing and they would put the body there and let burn. the body just go back in, in nature. Oh, they but, didn't burn it. I thought they burned it. No. No. Even in my culture, we never, we never burned the bodies. We always just put them in nature. And then everything would just get consumed naturally and, and there'd be no more remnants because we believe everything goes back to the earth. So however that is, it's just left for nature to take care of. Mm -hmm. um, so they, sometimes you will see pictures of uh, people standing and then there's these four poles and then there's this thing with the body up on top. They don't burn it or anything, they just put it there, leaving it with creator and everything. And so, so the body wouldn't fall off because of gases and other things, the body would move and roll. So a long time ago, they used to tie them. So as the body moved, the ties would tighten and tighten, tighten, and the body wouldn't you know, end up falling off the thing, it would stay up there. So the word Uipi in, in the Sioux language is tied up. So when the medicine man is ready, they put a cloth over him, like a, a, like a robe, yeah. and then they tie him. And there are seven ties. And in his, what he's doing is, in his belief, he's offering himself to the universe. So whatever he's praying and doing, it's going to bless and help everybody. And that's the most, most sacred thing he can give. So his prayers are answered to help everybody. So he dedicates his life and he trains to do this. And so in a way, is, he's reenacting his death. He's giving, uh, he's he's giving away. Himself. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. So in lots of cultures, you give incense, you give lots of other things, you give flags, you give all kinds of stuff. You go in Buddhist temples and you sit and you give the incense to the ancestors. You put rice and everything like that. Then you give and you leave it there. Mm -hmm. What he's doing is using himself in his belief, knowing it's going to heal and change people's lives. Yeah. So he does this for everybody. And he gets trained and taught in this way. And he dedicates his life to this, uh, uh, to help people. How, how many medicine men participate in the UEP ceremony? There's different drummers so he brings in drummers who sing certain songs to call in the spirits so the first one is always the welcome song mm -hmm. so once a welcome song comes in you start seeing because he has rattles on his altar and the spirits take those rattles and start shaking them and that and there's other things he has there the spirits use nobody touches them only the medicine man and so once a welcoming song comes in they sing the next song and then the spirits will ask people to pray or talk or do things or share whatever. So the medicine man will ask somebody to pray or talk and whatever needs to get done. And then they sing another song and then the spirits will channel and give information and that. Uh, they give names, like the spirits will give you a name so you give offerings and other things and you're saying you're coming to the ceremony to get your spiritual name. So you'll give your flags or tobacco and that because... They, they give names to whom though? To, to the participants or... If that's what you're asking for. Aha, okay. So they look at your spirit. Yeah. In your spirit, they see your connections to things and they take mm -hmm. that and they create a name around it. And this is how you got your name Fox Dreamer? Uh, how I got my name was, uh, I knew an old medicine man and I befriended him and I shared a lot of knowledge with him and I was going to move on. And, uh, he asked me before I left, he says, uh, is it okay if I pray to get you a name? And I'm like, if you want to do that, then it's totally up to you. I'm not asking, I'm not giving offerings. I'm not putting that responsibility on your shoulders. And so he made up his mind. And for one year, he went into the sweat lodge. Every time he went in there with his pipes and that, he would pray and ask the spirits. And one time the spirits came in and they showed him my life and all the things I did and way into the future and everything. And after they explained everything and showed him everything about me, they said, 
uh, his name is Box Dreamer, or Shoni Humbly is, is the way he says it in his language. And when I finally seen him, it was about two years later, I went to see him. And I was sitting there and he took me aside and he says, they gave me this name and he says, every time I take my pipe and I pray for you, uh, I say prayers for Shoni Humbly. That's, that's me. And he says, they explained his name to me that they gave to you. And he says, you've always had this ability to see things in people's lives. And what you see in their lives, when they don't believe it in that, when the universe shows you this, you pray in that and you bring people's dreams into reality, things they don't see and know. And he says, you've always had this ability and the spirits know this. So that's why they call you Fox Dreamer. But uh, what is the meaning of the fox then? Is this, is, does the fox as an animal, as a, is, is it a, a, does it have special abilities of, how is it related to seeing? If you look at the Mayans and their ancient awareness, when you go back over 3,000, 4,000 years ago, back into the past, they would look up into the sky and they would look at the Milky Way. And when you would look at it this way, you would see it looks like a fox. Oh. So they used to call it the fox. Uh -huh. And the native culture, when they look up in the sky, they used to see the fox too. I see. Okay. Uh -huh. So the spirits, when they look at me and they see everything I do, mm -hmm. they decided to give me this name. And he explained everything. It was real long. It was like sitting with him for quite a few hours for him to channel and share and tell, tell me everything. So, um, so the one who sees reality. Yeah, like every time I come into people's lives, I see and they let me know things. Um, like when we're doing our meditation, sometimes I will say something to somebody because this is what I'm shown and I know in the future it's going to become real, even if they don't believe it. Mm -hmm. That somewhere on their path, it's just going to get them there and these things are going to happen. I'm not concerned how they happen. I just know that somewhere I'm going to sit down one day with them and all of that's going to be real. That's something that's gone on all my life with me. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty well showed itself. And this is where I always tell people you can have the ability to see into the future with anybody. And we all have that ability to remote view, to, to channel, to share. And all the medicine people and everybody in the ancient cultures saw way into the future. And they were given this information and prophecies, whether it's through the Bible, through Nostradamus, through Rudolf Steiner, or whoever. They were given these visions. And all they knew is it was so important to share for in this time because people are confused and lost. What did you learn in this? Um, did, you, did you receive any messages uh, during this UEP ceremony? Because it was a very, very special timing also. I don't know if you know, but yesterday I made a video with um, Krasia Tasio, who actually says that yesterday was the actual uh, astrological new year as it was uh, recorded and always considered by the ancients. It was the first lunar crescent after the, um, Jesus, I cannot explain it. After the moon was in the fifth degree of Pisces. Don't hold me for that, but she has the explanation. But in any case, it was uh, considered the um, astrological year yesterday. Yeah, it's like a sacred beginning, right? Yes. Everything begins at a time and goes full circle and then it comes in and does that again, right? So was the UEP ceremony, um, does it have a special, um, was it a coincidence that it was held at this time? Uh, no, it was chosen by the medicine man and the spirits. Because uh -huh. the original idea me and Cindy were going to do is we're going to go down to around Pemberton to this other reserve. And it's, it's about the same distance, maybe four hours. We drove for four hours or so. And so... Uh, Pemberton on March 22nd, they're holding a UEP. This is, somebody showed me the flyer. So I phoned the guy and I asked him about it. So our intentions is to go there because it's the equinox. It's, you know, full, uh, the 22nd. It's, I thought it was going to be a very powerful thing. 
So I phoned him and we're asking, and then I asked him, I says, so do you know any other UEPs like somewhere a little bit closer? And so he said, well, we're going to be coming up to Lillooet and we're going to be holding one there. So I'm like, okay, when? And he says, on Monday. I'm like, okay. And I asked Cindy because he's like, do you want to come to it? And I says, I have to talk with my partner because I'm not sure. And she says, yeah, I'm off. So let's go. So we got a hold of uh, Mercedes and Jackie and they agreed. So we all took off in one vehicle and drove there. It was really interesting because while we were there, he said, uh, because we were hungry and we figured might as well eat before because the ceremony could go really long. So we decided to go to a restaurant and eat and they were going to have a sweat lodge. And I could have went to the sweat lodge, but I didn't feel I needed that. But neither did Cindy and them. So we ended up eating at the restaurant and he said to wait there and he would pick us up and we could follow him to the reserve where the ceremony is. So it was like two and a half hours we we're sitting there and it's like, Sweat lodges don't go two and a half hours. Like usually they're up to about an hour and a half, sometimes two hours. So, and two and a half hours, I'm like, maybe Mercury, Mercury retrograde, something shortened, he forgot, or he got into something and left us out of the ceremony. Mm -hmm. So we sort of panicked and we're driving, the phone rings and he's like, are you guys still at the restaurant? We're like, no, but we can go back. And he says, well, I'm just done and I'm going to come by and I want you guys to follow me. So we went back and we parked outside a restaurant and he finally came up from this area there sweating and he waved at us in the truck. So we just followed him up to where the ceremony was. And while we were there, the medicine man still wasn't there and other things. And there was a lot of natives there and they black out the whole building and make it totally black. I held inside. It, is it held inside indoors? Yeah, yeah. yeah it was in a, inside a building, nice and warm. Mm -hmm. So the medicine man finally showed up and he did what he needed to. And then they shut out the lights. That's when the spirits come in. And uh, this is the second time they did it there with these people. So the spirits came in and they gave a name to a little girl because her grandmother gave some flags and tobacco and the little girl got a name um the spirit said that the the message they gave before the ceremony ended was that the flags and tobacco that were given are very very powerful and they're going to get the medicine man to take it back home and he's going to pray over them and he's going to work and then they said, we're going to take those flags and tobacco into heaven and we're going to bless these for the people that came to do this. So that was the message they gave. Mm -hmm. And when it was over, we drove back. We got home about 2.30 in the morning. So it was a really, really long day. Yeah. So how long did, does it take the ceremony altogether? With the Sioux medicine man that I did the ceremony in the past with, his was about five or six hours. Uh-huh, okay. This guy's one was about a half an hour. Mm. And do you, go ahead. Do you, do you get any uh, messages other than personal messages? Or uh, visions? Basically, the spirits connect with everybody. Uh, all I know is they're going to come and visit everybody. Like they'll visit you and Crassy. Um, they will come in and they will assist with everything. And usually I get shown things, but while I was in there, I just felt I needed to pray and make sure I prayed for everybody I wanted to pray for. Because there's a, a cousin of Cindy's in Alberta who has a daughter who is very, very gifted and things are going on and stuff like that. So I said prayers for them. Cindy has a friend in Australia with a child who having a lot of problems and having a hard time. So said prayers for the spirits to go and help the, the little boy in Australia. Said prayers for Cindy's uh, two nieces who are going through some really difficult things. So we asked spirits to go and help. So 
I stayed in a lot of prayers because there was a lot of people. I always pray and, and in our meditations and that I want people to grow and heal and things. So uh, they showed me some stuff and but I was more focused on praying and making sure I fulfilled what I said I would pray for people. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. usually if it goes really long, then I sort of stop and I start getting them to show me all kinds of stuff. But it was really short and I was really surprised too. Because mm-hmm. when he's in that that shroud he's in, his voice is very, very muffled. Okay. So when he's talking and giving messages and that, it's sort of hard to hear. So everybody's been really quiet trying to hear what is being shared and said. Do you understand the language that he speaks? They speak pretty well speaking English. Uh, this Manitoba boy, the tribe he's from, doesn't speak the language of the people here, so he speaks in English. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, some of them, they'll bring in translators, so they will speak in their language or whatever the spirits is sharing, and then it would translate. I've been in ceremonies where the medicine man only spoke in his language and had an English translator to translate to everybody what's being said Mm -hmm. and and so usually you said that when you when there are such ceremonies you they're in tents so that's why they call them shaking tents right because the spirit comes in and starts the the shaking shaking. tent is is another ceremony that comes work from way around james bay it's um inu cree so it's it's a cree ceremony very very ancient And they build a a, a structure where people sit inside, but then they take willows and they put the willows, they could be about eight feet tall, and they make a circle with these willows. And then they take uh, willows and they tie it around four times. Mm -hmm. So it's like a big, long, hollow tube. And then they put uh, different colored cloth they tie it around and then they tie medicine and herbs around and the medicine man prays in that and then they cover it in sheets and oh. and stuff they okay. wrap it up really really lots and then they tie the outside to keep everything on uh-huh. and they say it's an interdimensional porthole it's like a wormhole yeah so it it moves and when the spirits, they come in and out from that, that porthole to help people. And the one we were in, every time spirits came in, there would be this giant flash of light, like somebody flashed a 10,000 watt light bulb, but just super, super bright. Yeah. And there's things flying around because the spirits, they take certain spiritual objects, that's a medicine man, and it flies around. So if he's got bells on his altar, they will take them and they will shake them if there's rattles or eagle fans and the fans will be flapping like birds flying around in the place. Like they'll just be moving all around in the air. Yeah, maybe just to insert that that's why they're called shaking tents. This is what I also didn't know, but Cindy explained that they're called shaking tents because spirits actually do shake the tent. Yeah, and that's the one that's that's turning. Mm-hmm. So that. So that thing is is moving around, and like I say, they're coming in and out, and they're helping people. Mm-hmm. Night lodge. Uh, there's different kinds of night lodges where people come in, and there's a medicine man. Again, he has an altar. He has the the four flags and whatever is his altar, and the flags that people pray in the tobacco. And it could be just like in a room like this with maybe 40 people sitting around the edge and then the medicine man. Uh, one night lodge I went to, there was an elder sitting here and he had a woman sitting next to him and they have pipes. And so after everybody does the offering, they do the pipe ceremony and, and they do that. Then they turn out the lights and the medicine man starts having everybody sing the song and the spirits come in and everybody has a different experience. Like when the one I was with this one medicine man and woman, I could hear the buffalo in there and I could hear the the hoop hitting Mm -hmm. the floor. And as the drum was going, I could hear the buffalo dancing, boom, boom. And I could hear him breathing and everything. 
and there's like different things. It's like me, the bear came to me and, and you could feel the fur and the claws on the bear and that he's, he's tapping you. Mm -hmm. So these spirits come in and do stuff and they hold it for a while and then they have a break and then they finish up the ceremony. So that one, the medicine man, him and the woman, they, they did that ceremony and he works with the bear a lot, but lots of spirits coming. The other one we had in uh, Kelowna, we had about 50 to about 60 people I invited. And the medicine man, him, he gets tied up. So they tie him up and they cover him. And then they lay him down, they put out the lights. Then he calls in all the spirits and he had bells and eagle wings and other kinds of stuff and rattles were flying all over, banging on the ceiling and like just everywhere. And it went on for four or five hours, I guess. And it ended about 2.33, somewhere in the morning. Is this information that home. spirit is this information that spirit allows us to put out? Say again. Is this information uh, allowed by spirit to be put out? This is what I really want to do. I since I was a little boy, my granddad always told me that all the information, anything, even the natives, they have to share all this information, but Really, lots of them are trying to keep it closed. But if you listen to prophecy and everything, the natives got to share all their knowledge with the whole world. It's like the Buddhists sharing their knowledge. It's like any other culture shared their knowledge. Mm -hmm. And there's lots and lots of ancient ceremonies. Like even in Central America, they're trying to share really lots of their knowledge with the, the world because everybody needs to know and understand it or have permission to try it. Mm -hmm. And because I have a friend who um, who attended such a ceremony, a shaking tent ceremony, although they did it in a, not in a tent, but in a room. And he said really weird things happened there that I can't explain, but I'm also not allowed to talk about it. Yeah. And they did it in Austria. So that's why, uh, that's why I'm asking this question. Yeah. And this yeah. is where the medicine man uh, decides it's really important for the world to know or not. A lot mm -hmm. of people will get afraid of it. To me, it's a normal thing. To me, mm -hmm. this should be all the time. It should be in everything. It should be, everybody should be connected to the angelic realms in whatever form that's positive and good. But there's too many people afraid and too indoctrinated and programmed to believe in the fear of the Bible or evil or whatever. In the natives, we say mischievous ones. Mm -hmm. uh, if something is there and it's bothering and trying to scare, we say it's a mischievous one. It doesn't understand. It's, it's just doing what it does. And maybe it's not evolved yet. It doesn't have that full consciousness and it doesn't have the compassion and the love to want to do nurturing, loving things. It's trying to scare people. So it's mischievous, like a little child who doesn't understand. Mm -hmm. So in these ceremonies, we try not to bring people in who have lots of fear because it's not about scaring. It's about trying to help people to grow in a good way. And I want to find more and more and more the, the more modern native spiritual people who are willing to step up and share this. Mm -hmm. Even the Sundance, I believe everybody should know about the Sundance. It should be something that's very open because when you go to them, there's people from all over the world and they're all there sharing. But when it's done, it's like a hidden thing. It's like, you're not supposed to tell anybody. You're not supposed to this. You're not supposed to that. And I'm like, but you keep saying this belongs to the world. So why not have everybody show and teach it? Yeah. So it's a really difficult thing. And when you're willing to be very, very open, you get very attacked. Uh, mm -hmm. People think it's very powerful to deny the rest of the world this knowledge. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to find a way to do this. That's why I'm searching for certain medicine people in that. So we can find a way to open it up. 
because I keep telling Cindy I would somehow like to have you and Crassy come here and sit in some of these ceremonies. And I think this this should be done everywhere in the world. There's lots of other ancient stuff in other parts of the world that's still hidden in other things. It's like even Mongolian shamanism. There are things they practice and do that's still hidden that be nice if it just gets shared all over the world. So whoever believes in the good can use it in a beneficial way. There's shamanism practice in every country. Maybe it's not called shamanism, but they're, you know, native local beliefs that are still practiced in small circles. Yes. They're still preserved, but among very few people. Yes. And it, it's cultural by every race because we're all giving it from the creator. Mm. And it all has something beautiful. And if people understood all of this, they'll see we all just come from the creator. All our all our awareness, all our stuff somewhere all blends together. And all, all of it comes from one source. Doesn't make us different. It's just we got to remove those little obstacles and see the beauty and how it's meant to help us all over the planet. How do spirits help? When you pray to spirits, how do spirits help? It's what like can going they do? into the church and asking an angel to uh, help a relative that might be in the hospital who's really sick and that angel goes into the hospital and all of a sudden the uh, relative gets better and comes out of the hospital. So it's the same, same concept. Um, we ask the spirits uh, in the native culture, we're just patient because the spirits take their time and then they come in and they look at everything. They want to see what they do. It's going to be really good and helpful for everybody. So it's not an instantaneous thing where everybody wants instant right now, right now, right now. And everybody just wants to be blissed out and happy. And just go, and I'm like, I'm a human being. I got feelings and emotions. And so it's a growing and a learning thing. I'm nearly cool. 60 years old and I've been practicing this and all I see is the good in it. I've seen so many magic things happen over the years with so many different spiritual people. And you wouldn't even notice them walking down the street. And they were just beautiful people. And they just showed up at places and they would do ceremonies. And then they just disappear. They never stood out in the crowd or anything. And when you went and visit them, they never really had much. They were just really nice, happy people doing good things. And they always amazed me with their knowledge and their wisdom. And some of them had no education and the stuff they knew was just mind blowing. Yeah, I mean, in the end, what is education? It's just a fraction of the knowledge that is available in the universe. Yes, and it's all there. It's even Einstein tapped into it, uh, Tesla, all these people, um, they all understood and they recognized and found something that opened those doorways where there's an energy field somewhere and if your heart and your mind is in the highest good you have access to everything god doesn't deny anybody anything but he looks into everybody are you selfish and all about yourself or do you really do something that's gonna assist the whole planet and mm -hmm that stuff is there like Einstein wrote letters to his daughter and there was stuff he was shown and given by the universe he didn't want to share with the world because it wasn't quite ready yet they would use that knowledge and energy to harm everything mm -hmm. and there's others even Michelangelo he channeled he did all kinds of stuff he received all kinds of stuff and when he realized the churches were trying to get that knowledge and use it to have power over the world he burnt and destroyed lots of stuff so they would never get it Tesla did the same thing. He tried to keep certain kinds of knowledge from getting used in a way that was harmful. So you have the ability, I have the ability. In my heart, I believe in the whole world and I want to see the future. I want to see the future where your, your child is an adult and raising his children in this world is something truly amazing and beautiful. And he's living in that paradigm that's the fifth dimension or the future, whatever you want to give it a name to. And I want to do that for many. And, and these children are born with this and they carry this awareness of the future and they're waiting to step into that. 
Uh, in the native culture, we just want to talk about the purification, and that's a cleansing of the old and bringing in the new. So opening our hearts to that beautiful awareness that's the future, and it's like a magnet. It's going to pull us there. That's truly our belief, and it's not about harm or gain. Now that you said cleansing, um, in our meditation for the world that we did a few weeks ago, we talked about the coronavirus, and one of the channeled messages was that the earth had a, is just going through a natural cycle of cleansing. This was one of many messages that we got. But right now, uh, the coronavirus is wildly spreading in Europe. It's like really a lot of cases suddenly from one day to the other, especially in Italy, but also now a few cases in Austria where there weren't before and in Germany. And it's like really obviously spreading. So uh, <clears throat> at the same time yesterday when Krasi and I talked, um, she mentioned that she had read from one of the masters, I believe Master Ben Suduno, that whenever you keep your energy high in, high, in high vibration, you're not contracting any viruses. Exactly. So what is your advice? How do we do that? Well, the first thing is not to focus on it because if you're focusing on it, then you're going to attract it because you're a magnet. Wherever you put your mind to, that's what you're going to bring into your environment. And the universe is only because whatever your focus is on, it's going, oh, you, you want this or don't you want it? I know that virus is everywhere. I, I seen on Facebook how it's going around and there's some news about the different parts of the world it's affecting. And one of the things that scientists have been saying for last 30 or 40 years is while the earth was a little cooler, because it was a little cooler, there were some viruses and things that are in the system that were dormant. Mm. But as the earth warms and the ice melts and others, there are ancient viruses that are surfacing. But if you really believe in the good, and like I said, you're focusing on the future, then you're not focusing all these things. And somehow you're holding an energy and you believe other people are going to be safe too. So those thoughts bring you up here. I don't, like I say, I don't really put my mind on a lot of stuff. Like when they say, oh, there's coronavirus or there's flu or there's this and that, I'm like, it's a natural process. At some point, it's going to stop and end. Mm. And the, the Earth Mother has buffers. At a certain point, she can change things. She can shift things. And I always say she's the best chemist because she created every life form that's walking on her right now. Every cell, every atom, she's the most amazing thing and connecting to her and believing she has all the answers. Mm -hmm. There are many herbs and many natural things on the planet that can easily get rid of that. Uh, one of the ancient ones in the bluebonic plague in England and Europe and that was colloidal silver. Mm -hmm. It's a natural antibiotic and having a little bit of that just gets rid of the different kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So the biggest part is just having knowledge because when you have knowledge, then you got no reason to fear. You always know there's something there going to come that's going to help you to stay healthy. And like I say, it's holding those positive thoughts because you get in a room full of people who are really heavy and down in that energy, you can't pull them up. They're going to suck yeah. you down and they're going to pull you down. They're going to keep you there. They're not going to let you go up and say no. Mm. So I always just pray and just ask to lift and hold that energy as much as I can for anybody that just needs it. But I'm not going to take on what they're believing and let them pull me down. Mm. And I try to help people as much as I can understand that. Because everybody's thoughts impact the world and people buy into everything that's being said all the time. And then it amplifies and that's every one person that decides to get afraid makes it harder for people like you or me or Cindy to bring that energy up and just believe that somehow we're going to, through the earth and the universe, hold that energy for other people to come and believe they can do the same thing. Mm -hmm because this is what we also practically do in the Meditation is Channeling group. So I'd like to invite you now again to the Meditation is Channeling. It's every Wednesday at 8 p.m. CET, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Um, you can also get a monthly subscription for that. And um, 
Uh, also, if you get my program, Start a Business with Meaning, I am giving you two months, uh, two monthly subscriptions off. So you can join us at least eight times every Wednesday for two months um, and, you know, amplify your manifestation uh, abilities and raise your overall vibration. Anything else as last words for today, Joe? Mm, I don't know. I, I, I just want to know or let people know that I really believe in what I pray and do. And it's really nice to see other people, even you, um, putting that energy out to the world. And if people would stop being superstitious and worrying if they're being tricked or, or anything, and it just feel inside, feel that beautiful, amazing energy that you love so much as a child and every day you woke up and you just saw the preciousness of life and, and you just lived. And it'd be nice for people just to trust in that inner voice and that and believe in their prayers too, that there's a lot more better things because there's a lot of beautiful young children out there and they're all stepping up. Last night in our meditation, there was two young people came into our meditation. Very, very gifted. They don't really have a lot of knowledge on the different concepts. So like uh, telekinetics or, or astro traveling or um, other forms like um, psychometry and that. But when they get this knowledge, they're going to be really at peace and understand why they have this awareness and what they can do with it. So it was really nice to sit with them and share. And I would like to see the transformations and things that they're going to walk into and they're going to just grow bigger and bigger and bigger, just knowing inside themselves they're going to fulfill something. So really, really finding that and sharing it in some way. It's like even if you find a video, you feel there's a friend there and just say, hey, you know, maybe if you watch this, it's going to assist you in some way to step up and find more peace inside yourself so if this video helped you in any way do share it like it subscribe and come back <laughs> thanks a lot joe thank you see you soon